Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. You've landed on Zero Limits Living. Every week I bring you information and inspiration to transform your life. The show has become so popular you can now see it or watch it on 1,000 platforms around the globe, including Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube, and I'm putting all the shows in one place to make it easy for you. It's at Zero Limits Living TV. Dot com, zero limits living tv.com. And I always like to remind you that you can have a free session to find out if my coaching program is right for you. Go to miraclescoaching.com, miraclescoaching.com. I started that program 20 years ago, and it's proven to be a system that works and it can work for you. Next, I'm very excited because I have a brand new program. I've been creating programs, hundreds of them, for a few decades now, and this one is the best of the best. This is a way to go into the past, to change your perceptions of what happened, to empower you with new energy in the moment, and then to create a new reality that exhilarates you in the future. It's my program called the Mental Time Travel System. And I know it sounds spooky, sci-fi, and anything else that comes to mind, but it works. Go to mentaltimetravelsystem.com and check it out, mentaltimetravelsystem.com. And now we're going to get to the fun of the matter. I have an exciting guest. I've already met her. We've already had an exciting interchange, and I'm going to read her biography very quickly here. Maria is an L.A. native entrepreneur and mother of two. She has been with her high school sweetheart for over 20 years. Maria is the sole owner and operator of Delish Events. Her company is celebrating their eighth anniversary in October of this year. She is happy to announce the last two years of business have been the best years yet. Maria contributes her success to never giving up under any circumstance and the importance of having the dignity to provide for yourself no matter what. It is important to know what your gifts are and talents are and to share them with the world. Maria loves to have her creativity challenged. Her goal for this year is extreme up-leveling, and her website is delishevents.com. Please welcome Maria. Standing ovation for you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you so much. You did great. Thank you. How are, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, doctor. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I, know, I know you're an animal lover because you've got a couple of puppies there. And one yes. of them just had surgery. Yes, she did. So good vibes for my little Sophie. Yes, but she's going to be good. Well, I'm a big animal lover. We have a French bulldog here, and we've been taking her to, to puppy daycare once a week because we're taking our first trip in three years. Oh, wow. And we, want, and we need the puppy to be okay going to puppy daycare. I well, get as it. it. Turns, as it turns out, she likes puppy daycare so much she doesn't want to come home. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how expensive that is out where you are, but I know out here it can get pretty pricey. So, you know, it just depends. You know what? <laughs> this is the prosperity mindset I come from. I never ask the price. Oh, nice. Oh, man. I have to start adapting <laughs> that one. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. We, well, it's the, infinite, infinity, right? Abundance. Absolutely. And that's exactly it. Well, the show is called Zero Limits Living. So we have exactly. to take the limits off of everything, including our love for our animals Absolutely. and our concern about our prices and yes. our ability to receive more. Absolutely. Right? Yes. I have to agree with you. Yes. Well, Definitely. you must you must agree with me on some level because you're an entrepreneur who apparently, from the bio I just read and from what, what I heard from Candace Barr, who introduced me to you, you're already very successful doing these events. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> Well, you must have some sort of mindset for success already because here's my point. If you've been doing events for the last three years, a lot of people weren't. The yes. pandemic, COVID. 
I mean, it was only three years ago I was going to put on this big event in San Antonio and I started to advertise it and people started to pay for it. And then all of a sudden the news started to get a little bit scary and people started backing off. They started collapsing. They started uh, deciding not to come. And I ended up having to do a virtual event. And I've basically been doing virtual events for three years. So my beginning question would be, how did you get around that? How are you doing events? Well, well, you know, that's exactly what I was actually afraid of as well, because again, we were kind of waiting just around to kind of see where everything was going. And we were still, you know, we had events coming up right around when the pandemic was hitting and some of our clients were, well, let's just still kind of do it. But then Mm. when everything like officially closed, everyone started calling us. They were like, Maria, you know, because of the pandemic, we're going to have to cancel, cancel, cancel. We literally, you know, book out a year in advance. And everyone, 100% of our clients that had already paid called to cancel. So oh. I had to give back 100% of the money back, right? Oh, I, I, know I, that. I feel that. I Did feel, you feel that. that. I felt uh, that. And uh, I know that I could have gotten away with, you know, maybe keeping a small portion like for a deposit, whatever. But I had to do what was right for me to sleep at night and just know that I I do that because this is what I love to do and the money comes with it. Right. So I get rewarded like that. So I said, okay, well, we're just going to cancel and we're going to start from scratch. We're going to start from zero. So I was actually a little worried because I was like, well, if there's no events, that means I don't, I can't provide for my family from what I know what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, um, I have a husband who supports me and, you know, we had a conversation says, okay, don't worry. We'll kind of strategize and see what we can do. If you know, we don't see things picking up in a couple of months, thankfully, Prior to the pandemic, I do a lot of a la carte services. We don't only just do event planning, but let's just say someone wanted to hire us just for, you know, an amazing dessert bar display. So we could do that. So I had ordered an ice cream cart. Okay. So those uh, ones that you, you know, dr- walk through the street and add, sell your ice cream. So I had mm-hmm. ordered one and the gal who I ordered it from said, Maria, it was around me. She said, your ice cream cart came in. So I was like, thank you, Lord. So I said, what are we going to do? We're going to start offering ice cream at these socials that people were still having, not to the great extent, but they were having like these little, you know, drive by baby showers, birthday parties. So we would do, we would fill up the ice cream cart with ice cream, drop it off for a couple of hours and then move on. Then I started getting creative again. I was like, well, I don't like just dropping off things. So I need to add my customization to it. And then I started theming it, right? Every Everything I do is themed and we're just known for like creating that wow factor. So then that's what I started doing. Then I started adding a little bit more and a little bit more. Then our clients started getting comfortable again. And they were like, Maria, you know what? We still want a party. We still want you to do things for us. So we just have to get creative and find a way to do it where we, we are still being safe. And we were able to do more of these events because now I wasn't required to stay like I normally would get paid to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, So then we got creative with that too. And we were just, I mean, I had my son turn, I have a newborn who's one, like a year and a half now, but I literally gave birth to him. And the following week I was already doing events. Like that's how it was. And I mean, it is just nonstop. So it goes back to, again, how I've been training my mind. Mm-hmm. Years ago, I think my world would have fallen apart and I would have been out of a business. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, I got creative. We adjusted. We learned to pivot. And then here we are. <laughs> wow. Well, there's a lot of questions within what you just said. One of them is you said you were training your mind. Yeah. which implies that at one point you might not have been so successful in going through a pandemic. You might've been like a lot of people and just been a victim and rolled over and did a lot of complaining. How are you training your mind? How are you training it then? And what are you doing even now? Cause you, you're a bright light, you know, you got a big smile, you have a lot of energy. So you're exuding a whole lot of love. Where's that coming from? Yes. Yeah, so that's coming from again, years ago, I decided that I was no longer going to be a victim of my circumstances. Right. So I wasn't going to blame, like, because I grew up not having, because I grew up in a poor neighborhood because my parents couldn't give me what I wanted. So 
I had to learn that it wasn't their fault. Like they did the best that they could with what they had. <clears throat> and then that it was going to be up to me how my life was going to turn out. And I have to say, yes, my life is pretty amazing now. Can it be better? Absolutely. Am I where I want to be? I still have a long way to go, but I did have to teach myself and learn from, you know, virtual coaches such like yourself and other people. I got closer to God. I just started learning and asking and searching because I know, and I knew that I wasn't going to get those answers like where I was and with the people that I was. But it, again, those were my parents. I can't blame them for not knowing, but it was going to be up to me if I either stayed the same or I was going to grow. So that, that's exactly. th this is fantastic, Maria. But what made you look outside of your circumstances? A whole lot of people who are blocked and locked into what they think is their environment and there's no possible way to change don't even consider making the change. What caused you to, to make a change? What caused you to so even look? What caused in, you to want to get out? Heart, in my heart, and I've been start and I started talking more about this recently because I've always felt something in my heart that told me that I was made for more, that there was more for me than what I was actually being a, like what I was seeing in front of me. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a feeling that I still don't know how to explain it and put it into words, but it's just like bursting, like Maria, like you got to keep going. There's more, you can do better. Like this is not the place where you're going to end up. And yeah. it's just here in the center of my chest. Like, I know it. I feel it. So I'm believing it. Well, you know, I've interviewed enough people to know. Uh, many of them have said they've had that feeling in them. And I can't help but wonder, does everybody have this feeling in them? But most of us are not paying attention to it. Most of us are suppressing it, ignoring it, turning a deaf ear, blind eye, whatever you want to say, and not considering. They might even say, well, I feel that there could, there's a new possibility. There's a new potential for me. But it works for Maria. It works for Dr. Joe. It works for all these other people. It won't work for for me. Do you suspect that there's that little nudge in all of us? You know, I do. I do have to say that we can all have that. And I'm sure we all have it, but mm -hmm. it's just like you mentioned, like, are we paying attention to it or are we saying, yeah, that's not for me and finding an excuse because mm -hmm. as you would know, um, it's an uncomfortable situation to be in. We okay. can want more. We obviously, who doesn't want to have more money? Who doesn't want to have the dream car, <clears throat> the dream house? but it takes work and work is what we're not comfortable doing. So we, <laughs> right. we will find a reason it's, and, and it's a valid excuse because it makes sense to us in our head as to why we should not, or that's not for us, or it's not going to happen to us because mm -hmm. the way you grew up or your parents <laughs> or whatever, and the excuses make sense, but you have to be like, no, that's not, for you don't believe it you you have to snap out of it but you also have to make a really like a, a choice that's in your heart and be genuine about the intention that's what i think yeah and that's powerful you just said some very wise words there but the thing that comes up for me is how do you how did you do it were you you're standing alone for the from what i understand here i mean you're watching videos or something or maybe getting books from the library but at the same time, you're standing alone in an environment that is supporting you staying the way you were. Yes. How, how do you encourage yourself? How do you get to the point where you're saying uh, the doubts are coming in, but I'm not going to listen to the doubts? Most people would listen to the doubts. Yeah. And How did you again, again, because it's so easy, right? So I have this thing where I do talk to myself often okay. than not. And, I, and I, if you ask any of my friends, I like, I am that crazy friend that instead of turning on the television to see, if you ask me what show is trending right now, I wouldn't know yeah. what's going on in the news. I really don't know. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll look because I need to know the weather because right. it'll affect you know, if I'm having an outdoor event, but other than that, I honestly don't care not to sound rude because I know that what's happening to other people in other parts of the world actually is important and it matters, but because of the type 
of person that I am, I would be paralyzed. I would be in fear. Like I would not be able to move. So I talk to myself like during the pandemic. And these are conversations that I would have with my husband. Why am I not afraid when the entire world is suffering? Like I did not fear like, I, and I have elderly parents, my dad, who is definitely like terminally ill, mm. he could have been affected. He could have had COVID and died. Right. So I, all of those thoughts did come to my head. I mean, I have children, they're young. What if, you know, that happened to them because some kids did lose their life through COVID. Mm -hmm. So I, I've learned to be sensitive to everything and whatever, any tragedy that anyone's going to, but I won't let it absorb me. And I have to understand that if it's not in my control to fix it, then I'm just going to have to pray for the people, pray for their healing and pray that they're able to move forward from that situation. So I have these conversations to myself, Maria. Yes. Well, you know what, Maria, there's X, Y, and Z planner. That's taking all of the best events, right? Or I'm reaching out to people that say that want to work with me and they never get back to me. Right. So then you start thinking, well, maybe am I not that good? Am I, I, I know I'm great. Right. But I can always be better. So what am I missing? I'll even ask, like, you know, help me out. Like I'm, I'm willing to volunteer my time for free. Like you just show me, teach me. And people sometimes won't even get back to me. Right. So that's when the doubt starts kicking in. But then I'm just like, no, Maria, like you did not get this far just to give up and let other people, however they're treating you, affect you. Why? Because I've come a long way. Like if you were to see where I grew up and how I grew up and how I got here, it's a miracle. So I remind myself, like I could be on the street. I mean, I'm blessed. I have a brand new home that we built from the ground up right. when I used to live in a one bedroom studio, like in my uncle's garage. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I, I just don't, I, I have no room to complain when I find myself wanting a reason to complain. I'm just like, no, Maria, we don't have time for that. And I'm like, snap out of it. And then I use the B I T C H word. And then I'm like, get over it. <laughs> but that's the truth. If I'm being honest, like that's what I do. <laughs> uh, that, that's what I want. I want the raw truth here and you're giving it to me and I admire it. I'm inspired by yeah. you. This is very exciting. So you mentioned your husband. Is your husband yeah. on board? Does he do the same thing? Is he? So does he? He's on board, and he's part of our team. I always like to give the credit where credit is due because I honestly wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Like he's mm -hmm. like the number one cheerleader for delish events. Yeah. He has his own profession, but he also does work with me. He, I do consider him my business partner. I mean, when I couldn't afford to have customized props built for me, he learned the craft. So he would build all of our, you know, props wow. that we made. I couldn't wow. afford to be a photographer. He learned the craft of being an amazing photographer. He was my photographer. So <laughs> everything is between my husband and I, we are a team. We're solid in that aspect. And I always say like, where would I be if it wasn't for you? I'm the one that sells the dream and he just needs to help me deliver it. But <laughs> right. he has to do the lumber. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he tells me. And then he's underpaid too, you know, but right, hey, right. Um, but you're doing like, what yeah, you love. Yeah. You're, I'm doing, doing what, what I love. love. I'm doing what I love. So I am extremely blessed on that aspect. Yes. All right. Well, well let's back up then. Where'd you get the dream to, to start doing this, the events and the catering, where did that come from? So I have been in this industry in the hospitality industry for about 15 years. And it all started when, well, I have a degree in psychology and a minor in criminal justice. So I was doing that right out of college, but through um, the recession in 2008, I actually lost my job. So I lost my job and I was like, well, I had just bought my first car, brand new car. And then I was like, okay, well, thank God I was still living at home, but I still had a car note to pay and insurance and cell phone. So I was like, what am I going to do? But I always say, thank God for those amazing friends. Right. So my friend who was still my friend at the time, he owned a couple of hotels in Orange County. So I called him up and I said, Hey, listen, like I just lost my job. Do you have anything for me? I was willing to, you know, housekeeping to answering phones to take taking out the trash, whatever. I just said, just help the sister out. So he said, come on in, let's see what we can do for you. And that's kind of where it all started. He trusted me. I had zero experience in sales. I didn't know what I was doing, but he just said, this is your desk. This is your office. Now figure it out. 
eight <laughs> years into that, I was like, okay, well, it's time for me to wrap it up and get out of here. I was no longer happy, not because of him or I, I mean the, my management team and all of that, they were awesome. Amazing. They're now some of my best friends, but just for specific people, um, they were making it a little bit difficult. So I said, there's no point for me to continue showing up in a place where I don't feel appreciated and or welcome. So then I said, you know what? It's time for me to kind of just turn the page in the book. And I had a conversation with my husband. We had just got married, bought in another home. And he said, you know what? Do whatever's going to be best for you. I'm here supporting you. And if you want to leave, then leave. And that's exactly what I did. And then I was like, well, any, any person that would probably in their right mind would be like, let's have another job backed up. Well, that <laughs> wasn't the case. I just said, bye. And then I was like, wait a minute, what am I going to do? Right. So then my husband said, well, I mean, you've been doing this for so long. Why don't you just kind of expand? And obviously I didn't, I wasn't prepared for that financially. So he's like, well, you have 300 bucks. Here you go. Order some you know, business cards and figure it out. And that's exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love this story, Maria, because you, you actually are illustrating a lot of the points that people have to do in order to be a success, but a lot of people don't want to do them. Yeah. For example, there's a, your willingness for one thing to do virtually anything. It's like, I have a new car. I need to have money coming in. I want to keep my car. Yeah. And so you're willing to do, you're going to take out the trash, whatever. A lot of people aren't willing. It's like, it's got to be this particular job for this particular pay, or I'm just going to sit at home and collect unemployment and then can take the car. Exactly. You're not like that. And so one of the things I'm seeing there is your willingness to go the extra mile. Another thing I saw there is that your support again, you're, you got support from your husband. I mean, he's a keeper. You keep that guy. Yeah, that's because what I tell him. There's times I want to kind of jump up, like make him jump off a cliff. But then I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. No, he he's your support. And we yes. can go really far if we've got somebody who supports us Absolutely. and willing to help us with that. Yes. And then the third thing I heard you say was all about creativity. Yes. Even when your husband says, we got 300 bucks, make it work yes. or fi or figure it out. My gosh, Whatever. that's 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 one of the secrets to success. Yes. In one of my books, I wrote a book called The Awakened Millionaire. And I said, everybody wants more money. You know what you need? More creativity. Yes. Not more money. You no. think more money will help, but it's really more creativity that you apply. So the other thing I wanted to ask you, though, is where did you get this sense of independence and personal power? Because, again, you're illustrating a woman who is willing to do anything. A woman is going to take the 300 bucks and find some way to make it work. A woman is yeah. going to try to do something through the pandemic and get an yeah. ice cream card, for God's yeah. sake. Yeah. You know, anything. Where did that come from? I'm, I'm trying to figure I'm, I'm, you have a degree in psychology. I'm trying to figure you out. <laughs> <laughs> so it, I have to I, I have to give my mom the credit, see, okay. because I was raised by a single mom pretty much. I mean, my parents uh -huh. were together on and off. But when I turned 17, that's when they kind of like officially separated. So my mother, you know, had to take on three, four jobs at a time just to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And in my culture, in the Mexican culture, it's always kind of like you don't steal. You don't ask, you know, for you don't take whatever doesn't belong to you, which kind of is the same thing as stealing. You work. You work for your things, even if it means selling oranges outside, like on the exit of a freeway, it doesn't matter because you are here with a purpose. And when I look at my mom, who is still to this day, I mean, her English is still kind of broken. You know what I mean? Was able to make it. I always say like, what excuse do I have to not yeah. make it in life, right? So she was always that motivate, like she didn't know that, but all I saw was work, work, work for what you want. I mean, even just going to college, um, not having transportation, having to get on the bus, you know, and my husband now at the time would pick me up at, like after, like in the evening. So I wouldn't have to take the bus in the evening, but rain or shine, I was at that bus stop. I had every excuse to give up because I didn't have parents that were asking me, like, did you do your homework? Did you pay your tuition? Did what the, and, and here I am working three full-time jobs. I mean, maybe not full-time, they were part-time and going to school full-time and no one was checking in on me. No one was saying like, is that girl okay? So I did it. And that's exactly 
how I've been able to do things in my life, but it comes down from seeing my mom do mm. it, you know? So yeah. yeah, you had a role model there and that's very powerful. You're still doing it on your own. What does she think of you now? So, now that she's seen, yeah. So I had this conversation with my mom not too long ago and I go, mom, you know, did you ever think I was going to be doing the things I'm doing? Because again, like, am I where I need to be in life or where I dream? No, because there's a lot of things that I still need to accomplish. But for me, where I came from to know that I've been featured like on NBC, on Telemundo, um, just, I have a, a Spanish channel that comes out to my home to film DIY segments. You know what I mean? And the list goes on. So she's like, well, no, I really never thought, you know, you would be doing this because again, you went to school to be a psychologist. Why are you planning events? Right. Because that still just doesn't add up. That's a mom's mentality. And if she's honest, that's exactly what probably was going through her mind when I said, I'm going to change career paths, mm -hmm. but she's never told me that she's actually proud of me. So I had that conversation with her not too long ago, go, mom, you've actually never have said that you're proud of me to my face, right? But I know you're proud of me because you tell all of your friends, you know? <laughs> and she, she tells me, Mija, send me, you know, that link that you just came out on, or, you know, I already told everyone and they're watching you on TV. <laughs> so it's just like one of those things, but it also has to do with the culture because her growing up, I'm sure, you know, her mom would have never told her I'm proud of you or I love you or like the way they express their feelings. So, I mean, I have to say, I know she's proud of me and she shows it in different ways because she's always also been one of our, my main supporters since like day one, where she would work for me for free, um, literally my entire family, because I couldn't afford to pay them. So their actions are always going to speak louder than words. So even though they have a hard time telling me that they're proud of me, I know they are. You can see it. You can sense it. You can feel it. You know it. That's 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 priceless. And congratulations, a, a parent's approval, spoken or unspoken, is worth it all. Yeah. So that's wonderful. But back to the three hundred dollars now. You got <laughs> you, your husband says we got three hundred dollars. Make it work. How do you make it work? I figure okay. you got to get business cards, but exactly. So we we order the business cards, and then I started calling everyone that I used to work with at the uh, hotel, right? So I was like, because one thing about me is that I'm always looking to build relationships. So even if it didn't work out between me and you, I still want to stay connected somehow because I'm sure down the road, we'll be able to find a way to work together again, right? Mm -hmm. So I started calling everyone, messaging everyone, and the my former sales partner at the time, he was going to get married. And he said, well, Maria, I can't you know, imagine anyone else doing my wedding besides you. So then I was like, well, I'm here for it, right? The only problem was that he was getting married in San Diego and I'm in the Inland Empire. So that's kind of like a two and a half, three hour drive. Wow. And I didn't have a car, okay, oh. to take everything. <laughs> so then here we are, what are we going to do? So then my husband and I were like, well, then we just need to buy a truck. So then here we are getting into debt because now we need to, you know, make this wedding happen. But it was just the way it all worked out. And to answer your story, let me backtrack a little bit. So my first order that actually came in was like a 50 uh, favor tags, right? So you the giveaways. So it was like 50 of those that they wanted me to do. I didn't even charge my client. I had said, you can keep them. So my husband was like, if you're going to start giving stuff away, <laughs> we're going to be in trouble, right? Right. So thankfully that was just like at the beginning but yes here we are doing our first wedding in san diego after the fact and i mean the rest is history everyone that i reached out to the for the majority of the part um they were so supportive it, if they didn't have an event coming up they knew of someone that was having an event and they were like you need to call her girl maria she's amazing just go with her and everything that i've done till this point i have to say about 95 percent of my work that i do is based on referrals 
That is beautiful. That is beautiful. It's another yeah. principle of success. You're yeah. shaking the trees. You're making the phone call. You're building your relationships. You're maintaining relationships yes. and not burning bridges and so no. forth. No, 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 no. <laughs> so when you're doing this, though, do you hire people to help you yes. put on like those early events? Absolutely. absolutely. We How now we you... have a team. Now we have a team that I outsource and work with depending on how intense the design is. But on any given day, we have anywhere from five to 20 team members that we staff a uh, day of. So in the for... very first one that you're doing with the wedding, how oh. do you know who to call? No, that you was my yourself. family. That, that was, was your fa family. Okay, that's what I wanted. To, that's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to yes, find out of you. No, no, no. That's when you got mom over that's and your husband. I, I have mom, husband, my you know cousins, whatever. Right. I still remember that was all family. Got yes. It. All right. So, non paid. Non paid. And, and non paid. <laughs> You're building yes. a business, right? That's yes. right. You rely yes. on family and friends yes. to do this. So as you're doing all of this obviously you got some bigger ones you got some bigger events to do you had to hire people then how did you know who to hire well again thankfully because of the relationships that i have built throughout the years i was able to outsource the people i used to work with at the hotel so wow. i've worked with them ever since and they've followed me gotcha gotcha <laughs> And do you have a favorite story about an event that was either maybe it was the most troublesome event and you pulled it off, or maybe it was just the most successful and it was easy to do? Do you have I, a favorite story? So I, because, and it's kind of hard because I know sometimes, you know, you have to say like, well, this one was better than the other, but because I just love everything that I do for everyone, I always oh. leave saying, oh, that was awesome. Or that one was amazing. Right. And again, it goes back to the relationships that I get to build with these amazing people that allow me to work with them and be a part of their special event. So just to be fair, I would have to say it was the birthday party that I recently planned for both of my boys because of the pandemic, we had to kind of put it on hold and because we were so busy, yeah. but they, they both share the a March birthday and we just kind of went all out for them. And that was super special because my little guy, who's only three and a half, He's very hands-on with mom and he'll help if, you know, we're decorating, blowing up balloons or whatever. He's always involved. And it was like, if he helps me do all of this for all of these other kids, like how is it that he's not going to have such an awesome event, you know, or an awesome birthday party? Yeah. So that to me was a very special one because even he was out there helping our balloon artist blow up his balloons for his birthday and <laughs> going to pick up the cake. So he actually got to do everything that I would do for someone else, but for his own birthday. So That's, that would be the special one. That is, that is beautiful. And you're a positive person, but I also have to bring up, was there a really nasty one or one that was a very challenging one and you turned it around, you pulled it off, you got through it, but you know, it might've been rough going. Yes, absolutely. I I mean, you can always, uh, you know, find those if you focus, right? Because there's always something that goes wrong. But one of them that sticks out in my mind just, you know, recently that I was actually sharing the story with someone else was a bride that I had and it, her, her guests were already arriving to her ceremony. And here we are waiting for the bride. She's nowhere to be found. So then, you know, it's already 15 minutes and guests are waiting. So I pick up the phone and I call her hotel room and she's like, oh, I was just in the shower, you know, and I'm like, what do you mean you were in the shower? Like no hair, no makeup, nothing. Right. So I said, OK, so how long before we can expect you again? Because she is the bride and the party can't go on without her. But you're coming down. Right. She said, yes, just give me like 20 minutes. I'm going to put on my dress and I'm coming down. So just. You know, everything uh, contrary to what you would normally expect for a bride to do, right? Right. So she comes down and she's telling me, Maria, the only thing I care about today is my wedding cake. Okay. So mind you, the wedding cake was very important to her. So I said, okay, 
well, let me see if it actually has arrived. So then I go into the ballroom and yes, the wedding cake was there. Okay, no problem. So she said, can I see it? And I said, well, let's get you going into the ceremony. We'll see it after. So the ceremony goes by now. Tell me how did her cake get messed up in the interim of her having the ceremony and her finishing? I don't know. So the cake was messed up. I was about to have a heart attack because the only thing this girl cared about was her cake. Okay. So I'm calling the I'm calling the bakery and I said, please, they were already closed. They said, Maria, we're closed. I said, I'm begging you, please come and pick up the cake. Long story short, they come pick up the cake, they fix it and they bring it back. So she's asking, she's done from the ceremony. She's asking Maria, can I see the cake? And I go, you know what? They had to put it in the refrigerator because it's buttercream and we couldn't keep it outside. Literally, she went over what I had to say, walks into the ballroom. And here I have like my team taking it out through the other door. Okay, kind of <laughs> like she missed it. So then I'm like, oh my goodness. So anyway, we get this. She, I just said, just give us some time. We'll bring it out in a little bit so you could see it. You know, she went on about her day. The cake gets fixed. We bring it. We set it on. We put the cake topper. She sees the cake. It's perfect. Next thing you know, somehow the cake topper comes tumbling down wow. from the onto the cake. So now the three tiers are messed up again. Okay. But thankfully she saw the cake. It was perfect. Whatever. She said, Maria, don't worry about it. Just flip it around. Okay. No problem. <laughs> We're moving on into the evening. Right? So right before the cake cutting that damn cake topper falls off again. And it was a little figurine of the bride and groom that wow. broke in half. So then, I was like, <laughs> so then I was like, okay, I am done with this cake and I am ready. I still remember I was crying in the parking lot. I called my husband. And I said, this would be a good day for me to just stop what I'm doing because this cake situation is just getting to me. But yeah, that, wow. one's, that was a pretty intense one. Wow. Wow. That yes. is pretty wild because you can read symbolism in that. You can wonder if she was worried about the cake and the, the couple breaking yes. on the day of the wedding. Yes. But, I mean, there's all kinds of things that could have felt like voodoo to but her. Even just the way she showed up, like yeah. no hair, no makeup, nothing. She literally put on the dress and that was that. <laughs> and the cake was what was and important. The cake was what was important to her. Yes. This, this is pretty wild. What a great story. And, and yet again, you're the trooper in this. You get it handled. And, and yeah, you do feel the emotion of it. You're crying in the yes. parking lot. But but I still admire the warrior part of you that says, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to make her happy. This is going to be a wedding. I'm yes. going to complete my job. Yes. I, I love that attitude. There's something that's still bouncing around in my brain that you said a few minutes ago, and you said you had this conversation with your husband about COVID, yes. and you had yes. said, uh, why aren't I afraid? Yes. And yes. I don't know that we really answered that, and since COVID is more or less still out there, I mean, the pandemic, some say is over, some say is still going on, but the virus and all that, is, well, who knows? We don't need to get exactly. into that part, yeah. but why, why did you feel like you weren't afraid during the the lockdown for most of the world because i have to attribute that to my faith and the relationship that i've been able to build with god okay in the last couple of years yeah where i literally knew that if it was time for me to go i was going to go and there was nothing that i could do to prevent that okay. so I just literally learned to embrace the situation. I love hanging out at home with my children, with my husband. So for us, it was like awesome. You know what I mean? Even though he still had to work just because of the line of work that he does, mm -hmm. it was considered essential. So then he had just a couple weeks here and there when they would, you know, shut the plant down because some, there was a case of COVID. But other than that, for us, it was amazing. We love hanging out. I learned to cook. I'm not a cooker. I mean, I'm oh. Known oh, for, I wonder. Okay. I'm, I'm known for quesadillas. That's about it. <laughs> so I was actually even like learning new recipes. I was doing new things. I was decorating my yeah. laundry room, you know? Yeah. So I was happy. I was like enjoying <laughs> my time. I And I was genuinely enjoying what was happening in my home. So <laughs> Maria, I, I think that you actually have just spelled out the, the antidote to the whole virus. And that's the idea of being happy. 
Yeah. It's the idea of enjoying your life. It's the idea of having the love and the time with your family. Because one of the things that at least the scientists I paid attention to, paid attention to said is that the stress of worrying about getting COVID actually lowers your immune system so you can get it or something else. Yes. If you can come from the reverse and come from faith, come from trust, enjoy your life, reach yes. for happiness, yes. do what you love, all of that kind of stuff, you actually booster yes. your own immune system. Yes. So you were doing this in a very natural way. So I'm, I'm glad I asked you about it because this could be very comforting to other people. Absolutely. The other thing you said is you don't cook, or at least you cook very little. Yeah, very little. <laughs> I, I would think as an events planner that this is just me imagining what it's like, that one of the things you would do is like, I'm going to cater it. I'm going to go cook, you know, 4,000 no. lasagnas or whatever. I, I'm actually known for starting fires in the kitchen too, just <laughs> so you know. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. Yeah, Good to so know. Exactly. So again, my family, my close family parents know that if they're coming, bring your food because then they'll be like, what are you cooking? I mean, you should already know every time my mom calls me, what are you doing for dinner? I go, mom, you should already know. What are right. you bringing is the question. <laughs> right, right, right. We're eating with you, mom. Exactly. This is yes. so cool. Well, another yes. question, because you're self-employed and you apparently are doing well enough. The TV crews are coming to interview you yes. and and come into your home. So Thank God. congratulations yes. on Thank all you. of that. Thank but what you. about competition? There's no doubt competition. This is not a standalone, you got the corner on the market kind of a place. No. How are you, you don't seem to be worried about the competition for one thing. But no. even in, in the beginning, when you're starting out, now you're a beginning competitor. Yes. How, do you, how did you feel about that? And how did so you- So again, hmm? I've trained myself to not worry about the competition. Good for you. I'm wow. like this. This is it. I'm happy to see everyone in my, you could say in, help me out with the better lack of word mm -hmm. in what I do in the industry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So in the industry, mm -hmm. I, I'm happy to see that they're making it, that, you know, they're getting the clients that one day I wish, you know, to have. I love it. You know, like I said, I sometimes you reach out and the response isn't what you're expecting, but that's okay because I know that my time to shine even brighter is going to come. Wow. So I'm just like, this is it, Maria. Like, good for A, B, and C. I'm happy to see that they're doing well, but it all, and I know 100% it comes down because I'm genuinely happy for others so mm -hmm. if it's no competition we are building a network uh you know environment where i've had it where people call me and want to work with me and for whatever reason i'm not available i will find them someone to work with and never once will i think did I do the right thing now they're never going to call me again or whatever no i help connect the dots i am I love being resourceful. That's something that I love to do. And it's a natural gift that I do have. So I'm going to be okay. I know that. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that too. I know that too, just yes. by looking at you, you yes. know, you, you have an angelic way of looking at things here. You, you are very benevolent. You're very kind. You're doing what you love and you're kind to the other people around you. And no doubt that's one of the reasons people come to you. Yes. You're radiating love. They feel it. So they want to, they want to go to the light Yes. and you are light. Thank so you. before, before we run out of time, uh, I wanted to know when you knew I was going to be interviewing you, did you think to yourself, boy, I really hope he asked this or, or did you think to yourself, I really have this story or this principle or this insight, this message I want to get out? Were there anything like that? Because so, here's your chance. Yeah, no, no, no. I was actually like really grateful to begin with because like you and I were talking <laughs> outside of, you know, this interview. I remember when the book, The Secret came out, Yeah. I went and bought maybe like 10 or 15 books. Okay. <laughs> but hold on. And that's what I get. I gave my friends for Christmas. Like I wrote like a little message wow. and I gave that book away. So the fact that I'm here with you now is just like amazing. And also just like hearing your story, like you were homeless at one point, you right. know, you were living in a library. I mean, <laughs> how awesome is that? Like, I'm right. just like, um, 
I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. And, and if I would have known I was going to have an opportunity to probably to ask you a question, I would have probably prepared, but there <laughs> goes, you know, the mom brain. But um, I'm just saying like, wow, like you are just another reinforcer to mm -hmm. what I am believing and to the path that I'm choosing to follow. Mm -hmm. That yes, everything and anything is possible as long as you're willing to put in the work. Because like you say, um, we can think, you know, we can go and listen to affirmations all day long. And right. one may say, yes, it does work. And one may say it doesn't, but it all has to do with the perspective. Like, how are you seeing things? So yeah. I'll give you a quick story based yeah, on that. Please. And just um, again, going back to my faith. So not too long ago, and I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I am a stay at home mom and I take care of my kids. So I was just having like a really rough day and they just were falling apart in the living room. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a few, <laughs> I'm going to take a few minutes in the pantry. My pantry is big. So I get to hang out in there and make calls. So I said, I'm going to, I'm going to take a few minutes in the pantry and I'm going to call my church and I, I had this thing in the back of my head. I need to make a donation that I didn't do like that week on Sunday. So I said, this is the time I need to call and make that donation and also request a prayer. I love requesting prayers because it's just something so powerful that you feel, especially with people that do this for a living. It's powerful. So then here she is on the other line and I'm praying for delish events, right? I'm saying like may bigger and better doors open than the ones that have just closed. And I'm on the phone with a lady and my other line is ringing and it's one of my contacts for this um, Spanish TV channel, right? So I said, that has to be important, but I'm focused in what I'm doing now. So I will call her after. So since I didn't pick up the phone, she sends me a text message and she says, Hey Maria, just want to give you a heads up. I just gave your phone number to NBC because they are looking for someone to come and do a display for the, you know, Mexican heritage month. And I, I mean, tell me, I mean, it's just what you believe. I was literally praying like, Lord, open bigger and better doors. And I'm on the phone and the message is coming right under. And I mean, how else do you explain that? <laughs> I'm with, I'm with you. And you've illustrated two really key things here. And I don't know if you know, you said both of them, but I think two of these, both of these are keys to success for anybody watching or listening. One is you were giving. Yes. You remembered that yes. in this particular case, you were giving to your church, yes. and yes. which is great, but you hadn't given. So you were thinking, oh, I need to give. Yes. I think giving is a secret to success. Yes. People want yes. more money, but they're focused on it in the wrong way. What I've learned, and I've written a couple books on this, is that the more you give, yes. when you the give open heartedly, yes. the more you will receive. Yes. And in fact, a great deal more than what you gave. Yes. That was the first thing, the giving. And the second thing was the asking. Yes. I tell people that you need to ask, and there's two levels of asking. One is ask people who can help you, like your husband yeah. or your kids or your mom, yes. but also yeah. ask your connection to the higher power, yes. whether you call that God or the divine or exactly. whatever. Whatever you believe. Yeah, whatever you believe. So I think you just illustrated two more principles here. And I can't help but wonder, did, because I'm a book guy, were there books outside of The Secret that influenced you along the way? Was there anything that comes to mind that was something like I, I read Think and Grow Rich. I read The Magic of Believing. I read uh, How so to Think Bigger. Yeah. So this is the thing about me that I'm still trying to work on. Okay. So I love books. Okay, but it's very rare for me to finish a book okay. because I skim and I look and I'm like, okay, this, or I already heard a review of this and I go deeper into that section. Yeah. So it's just a collection of books that I've have read chapters, specific chapters that I feel like are, I, that are towards me throughout the years, because there's not just that one book yeah. for me. It's just a collection of information that I've been able to gather throughout the years and, you know, audios, whatever it is, it's just information feed. What are you feeding your brain? 
is how, you know, everything's going to turn out to be. Well, I think that's another insight, though, whatever you're feeding your brain. And that means what what you're reading, what you're listening to, what you're watching, uh, the people that are around you. Because if you're staying around naysayers or the critical or so forth, they're going to rain on your parade. They can make you feel lousy. If you're paying attention to the mainstream news, that could probably make you feel afraid. So I think your your comment about how are you feeding your brain, it's books and more. And just between you and me and whoever's watching and listening, I don't read all the books I buy. I'm a book freak. I'm a book addict. I got all kinds of books here. People will often see my library. One of the key questions they always I know, ask. I can see them. They all ask, did you read all of them? No. I do I do what's called intentional reading, which is similar to what you described. It's like there's something in the book that I want. Sometimes the book out devour the whole thing, but very often I'm looking for something specific. And again, it's a collection. So yes. um, your website is delish or delicious. delicious, delicious or, events. And no, you, delish events. And that is spelled D double E L I S H events with an S.com. And how far from home do you go to do an event? Wherever our clients take us. That's usually <laughs> what I tell everyone. If you want to take us, we'll go wherever you want us to go. <laughs> so, I, so I'm in central Texas. So if I said, uh, Maria, I want you to do an event. You're like, okay, I'm there. I'm down. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I am here for you. You are an amazing person. What a bright light you are. I feel energized and inspired by you and your story. Thank you. And do you have any more words of wisdom for people? Something you want them to think about? You know, something you want them to do besides go to your website? Yeah, I mean, um, and and usually, I mean, the going to my website is the last thing I ever think about. It's just I I want people just to understand that they too deserve to live a beautiful life. Uh, um, yeah. And I know that it could it sounds super easy, and people may say, yeah, it's easy for you to say, Maria, right. but it's not because it's been a lot of work. It's been work that I've had to do within myself for years. And finally, I'm feeling like I'm a freaking rock star, you know, but that's <laughs> what I believe. I don't care what anyone else has to think about me, but it's just, it's work that I've put into myself. Yes. And if you, the listener can do that, you guys are just going to live like such a more fulfilling life. And it has nothing to do with money. It just uh, has to do with how you feel. And I mean, it's over. You can take over the world. Like you literally can. <laughs> uh, uh, off the wall, final question. What's the sign say behind you? It looks like, darling, you are here. Oh, darling, you belong here. Ah, uh, darling, you belong here. Is that a message to you? That's a message to me, my husband, and my kids. That is beautiful. But you belong here. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> I've greatly enjoyed meeting you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Blessings to everyone. Bye. This is Dr. Joe Vitale. You've been listening to Zero Limits Living. Every week, we bring you inspiration and information just like what you heard from Maria. Very fiery, passionate, and based in love. Uh, this show is so popular, you can now see it or hear it on 1,000 platforms, including Roku and Apple and Amazon and YouTube. Just go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com and watch all the episodes, ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. Be sure to get your free session to learn about Miracles Coaching. Go to MiraclesCoaching.com. Check out my new online program, MentalTimeTravelSystem.com. Now, surely you're curious about that. MentalTimeTravelSystem.com. I want to thank Lux Media, Candace Barr, Chris for running the cameras, everybody for watching, tuning in, Maria for being my my guest, onwards and upwards, expect miracles. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASA. NASA increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.SalvationNutra.com.